Hi Gators! I hope you guys are using this opportunity to go outside as much as you can and enjoy the beautiful sunshine. Um, today we're going to pick up right where we left off with perimeter. So in the last two lessons we've been discussing how we can use unit squares or side length to find the perimeter or outside distance of a shape. So we're going to use that knowledge today to be detectives. We're going to use it to find some unknown side lengths. So today what we're going to see are some polygons or shapes with sides that we may not know. So you can see this here is a shape with four sides, which means it's a quadrilateral. The top side is nine centimeters long. This side is six centimeters long. The bottom is three centimeters long, but this missing side here, they've named it N. Now they could have named it anything. They could have named it F, they could have named it J, they could have called it George, but they decided on N. So N is what we're gonna use to give this side a name so that we don't lose track of it in our problem solving today, all right? They also have to tell us when they do a missing side problem, the perimeter, or they have to give us another clue. So they told us our perimeter today. They said our perimeter is 25 centimeters. So if I add nine centimeters, six centimeters, three centimeters, and whatever this missing side is together, I should get to 25. Believe it or not, that's all we need to solve this problem. So let me show you what that looked like. All right, so I put perimeter P equals nine plus six plus three, plus that missing side N, right? So I'm gonna plug into P that 25 centimeters that I know is my perimeter because they've already told me that. I don't need to solve for that today. So I put 25 is going to equal nine plus six plus three plus our missing side N. Now I'm gonna pause here very briefly to say, remember friends, that it doesn't matter what side the equal side is on. It can be on this side or it can be at the end where we usually see it. Either way, it doesn't change our problem. This section is going to equal 25, all right? So I'm gonna focus this down. I'm gonna combine the part that I know. I'm gonna solve the part I know. So I'm gonna add nine plus six, which would get me 15, right? And I'm gonna add three, which would get me 18. So now I know that when I have the 18 from those sides that I do know, and I add that missing side, I'm gonna go up to 25. So now I can ask myself, what added to 18 would get me to 25? Now, one way to do this is to just use a count up strategy. So I'm gonna count up from 18 to 25. Ready? I'm gonna count 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25. So if you could see there, I've got seven fingers up. So I've counted up seven. So that missing side N has to be seven centimeters, right? Another way to solve this is by using subtraction because when I ask how many more do I need to get from 18 to 25, I'm solving a how many more problem. Now, if you remember our keywords discussion, just like each tells us multiplication or division, how many more tells us that we need to subtract. So I would take my 25 and I would be taking away my 18 to see how many more I need to get from 18 to 25. So I would subtract eight minus five, I would need to borrow, which would turn the five into a 15. 15 minus eight would be seven. And then I would be left with one minus one, which would be nothing. So again, I just get the same answer. It's seven centimeters. All right, friends, I'm gonna pull up some problems for you to practice along with me. If you would like to pause the video at any point, either to go back to rewatch what I've already talked about or because you want to take the problem at your own place, please do that. Um, this is also a great point to go get that piece of scratch paper and a pencil so that you can work out those problems along with me. All right, my friends? So I'm gonna jump into this polygon right here. This one has one, two, three, four, five sides. All right, and it looks like this if you wanna pause here to take a minute to draw it. So I've already set up my equation. I have perimeter equals, and I left myself five spaces for the five sides. And you can see that this is my missing side right here, and this time they called it K. Doesn't change the problem, it's just what they decided to name that side. All right, so I have a side of three centimeters, and I'm gonna write that in. Three, plus a side of 10 centimeters, so I'm gonna write in 10, a side of six centimeters, and a side of eight centimeters. And then I have a blank, which I will call my missing side, K. So I'm gonna put my K in right here. So I know that my perimeter for this shape will be equal to 
3 plus 10 plus 6 plus 8 plus that missing side k. Lucky for us, once again, they've told us the perimeter, so we can solve this problem. So I'm going to take a moment, and I'm just going to rewrite this equation with my perimeter inserted into my equation. So I'm going to take my 32 centimeters, and I'm going to replace my p with that 32, because the perimeter is 32 centimeters. Then I'm going to copy down what I've already written. So 3 plus 10 plus 6 plus 8 plus that missing side, k, should get us to 32, right? Now I can start combining the parts of this problem that I do know and save myself a lot of hassle, all right? So I'm going to say 32, that stays the same, is equal to, and now I can start adding up those sides that I do know. So I do know that 3 plus 10 would be 13, right? Plus another 6 would be 19, plus 8 would be, I'll give you a second, 27, right? So when I add up those sides that I do know, I get to 27 centimeters. But I can't forget that I'm going to add that missing side in to help me get to that 32. So I'm going to write 27 plus K, that missing side, will get me to 32. Now I'm ready to use one of my strategies to solve. So for this one, I can solve again both ways. I'll show you each way. So first, I'm going to use my count up strategy. I'm going to count from 27 to 32 and see how many centimeters that takes me. So I'm going to start 27, 28. 29, 30, 31, 32. So how many centimeters more would I need to get to 27 to 32? I would need five more centimeters. So I know that K equals five centimeters. Now, what if that problem was really big and I didn't feel comfortable counting it up on my fingers? Well, it's a how many more problem, so I can take those two terms in this problem and I can subtract. So I'm gonna go over here to the side of my page and I'm gonna subtract. So I can take 32 and say how many more subtract to get from 27 to 32 and put in my 27 here. Seven minus two, I can't do that, right? I would need to borrow. So I'd take 10 from my three, turning it into a two for 20, and I'd bring that 10 in front of my one's place two right here to make it a 12. So seven, take away seven from 12, what would that be? Be five, right? And then two, take away two would be nothing. So I end up again with five centimeters. And this is a great way, Gators, to go ahead and check your problem. If you're not sure you got the right answer, try doing it another way, all right? I'm gonna open up to our next problem. Now this one is a little bit different. In the previous problems, we've seen our shapes with only one missing side, but sometimes they'll give us two missing sides, and I'll tell you why. We know a lot about geometry, whether we think we do or not. So if I tell you there's a square, and I even tell you one side of that square, if I say that square has a side length of three centimeters, could you figure out the other side lengths? You could, right? Because if you know about squares, you know that every side on a square has the same side length. And the same goes for rectangles. If I tell you one side of a rectangle, chances are you can probably figure out what the other side of the rectangle is. So the next problem we have shows us a rectangle, but it has two missing sides because they didn't want to make it too easy on us and give us too many clues. So I'll show you what that looks like. Here's our rectangle. They've told us this side length or width is seven meters. And so we know that the other side must also be seven meters. But they did not want to tell us this long side, the length. They named it J. They said J is what we're going to call this name. And they also call this other side J. And now why do they do that? Again, because whatever this J is, it's going to be the same on the other side, right? And then they give us our perimeter. Perimeter equals 34 meters. All right, Gators? So I already set it up for us. We know that our perimeter is gonna equal that seven plus this seven plus this missing side J plus this missing side J, right? We need to add all those sides together to get to our perimeter. So now I'm ready to start plugging in. Our perimeter is what? 34 meters. So I'm gonna put that where I see 
my perimeter symbol. All right. Then I'm going to combine the terms that I know. I'm just going to take a shortcut on this step. 7 plus 7 would be what? Be 14, right? So I'm going to put 14 in this red space that I've made to combine those terms. And then I can't really combine the J's too much because I don't know what they are. So I'm going to leave my J plus my J. All right. So this is actually as simple as we can get this problem. All we can solve for is j plus j and I'll tell you how we get from there to figuring out what just one j is worth. Alright, so we can count up, we can count from 14 to 34, but does that seem like something that's going to be easy to do on our fingers? It's not, right? You're probably going to have to use your toes. In fact, you might need to use all of them. So I'm actually going to use our subtraction strategy. I'm going to take my 34 and I'm going to take away how much I do know because this is a how many more problem. So I do know that I have 14 already and I know that I need to figure out what those two J's are, how much more to get to 34. All right, so I'm left with 34 minus 14. If I have four and I take away four, what would that get me? It'd get me zero, right? And if I have three take away one or subtract one, that would be two. So I end up with 20. I now know that j plus j equals 20. This is huge. So whether you know it or not, you're in the final steps of the problem. You know that a number, when added to itself, is going to make 20. So if you want, you could just do process of elimination. And I think as we do process of elimination, you'll figure out that there's a faster way. So if I did 1, that means this j would also have to be 1. So one plus one would give us two. Is that the same as 20? It's not, right? What about if the side length was two? Would two plus two give us 20? No, it'd give us four, right? What about three plus three? Six, four plus four, eight, five plus five, 10. Are you catching on to the pattern here? Whatever we do, we're gonna have to split this 20 in half so that each part is equal or the same length. So what two lengths would we have to add together to make 20? It'd be 10 and 10, right? Two groups of 10. So we know that J, just one J, has to equal 10. And then I'm going to go back and look up at our measurement. It was meters for our unit. So I'm going to write in meters. So J equals 10 meters. All right, Gators, that's all I have for you today. If you're still confused, please go back and watch this video again. Otherwise, great luck in finishing your worksheet for today and thanks for stopping in. Bye, Gators.